From the very beginning when I saw this concept being uh, promoted, well, maybe about eight, 18 months ago, I felt that um, it can be a very useful and powerful tool to draw the attention you know, of people, of politicians, policy makers, but also of common people to the fact that um, biodiversity conservation and sustainable use is not just limited or should not just be limited to wilderness areas or protected areas, but much more on, in areas where people, humans, have been evolving their societies in, uh, in synergy and um, in many cases in harmony with, um, with nature. And there are, there are so many cases you know, around the world where this is still, is still happening. But unfortunately, all these experiences, which are mostly based in rural areas, sometimes in remote areas, where indigenous peoples live, where local communities live, traditional resource users carry out their activities. There has been, over the past few decades, an increasing pressure of changes in those life lifestyles or invading those territories and those, land those lands, either to be logged or to be mined or to be converted into commercial projects. So all those experiences are under threat, basically. And uh, my aspiration of the Satriam Initiative is that it can be a tool to protect those communities who are living in harmony with nature on one side, but also to revitalize this concept that it is possible to live in harmony with nature and we should all aspire to do so, uh, following certain you know, principles and, and criteria, but also learning from all those experiences still existing where indigenous peoples and local communities still manage to have an harmonious relationship uh, with, uh, with nature. So, to, you know, to, to capture in a few words, I would say, or in a nutshell, I would say that um, I would um, expect the Satoyama Initiative to support as much as possible community initiatives in biodiversity, sustainable use and conservation. Because at the end of the day, biodiversity, you know, is not or, I mean, there is some biodiversity in the capital cities of the world, you know, or in the big buildings, but it's very limited. Much of biodiversity is out in the, in the local areas, in, uh, in the local landscapes, and that's where action needs to happen. The CBD has developed um, a huge and uh, very useful, if you like, you know, policy instrument to, to deal with biodiversity loss in terms of policy and papers. Uh, and guidelines, but what needs to happen now is really implementation on the ground. And considering the biodiversity is out in the rural areas where people live, it needs to be happening down at the local level. And that's where I hope that we'll be able to support, you know, um, change at the local level, empowering people to be able to maintain their, uh, their practices of, of sustainable use and where they've already been uh, changed and made them sustainable to reflect on what has happened and trying to uh, move towards a, a, a direction where there can still be a revitalization of um, an harmonious relationship with nature and a, a more sustainable living conditions where both humans and biodiversity can, can benefit.